The Bionic Woman got its start as a spin-off of the 1970s Six Million Dollar Man sci-fi TV series. The show starred Lindsay Wagner as Jamie Summers, aka the Bionic Woman. Throughout the series, she takes on a variety of special high-risk government missions while using her cybernetically enhanced superhuman powers. Despite its relatively short run, the Bionic Woman was a huge success worldwide. Not only did it see high Nielsen ratings in the US, but it also performed exceptionally well in the UK. As popular as it was, it makes you wonder why it only aired for three seasons. So join Factsverse as we address why The Bionic Woman was cancelled. Jamie Summers first appeared in The Six Million Dollar Man the Bionic Woman was a spin-off of the equally popular live-action sci-fi adventure series The Six Million Dollar Man. It was on this show that the character of Jamie Summers was first introduced in the two-part backdoor pilot episode, fittingly titled The Bionic Woman, in 1975. When the show's producers were casting Jamie, they considered both Stephanie Powers and Sally Field. Lindsay Wagner's Contract with Universal in 1971, Wagner signed a multi-year contract with Universal Studios and proceeded to work as a contract player, appearing on several Universal Television LLC productions. She made her primetime network debut in the show Adam 12 in the episode Million Dollar Buff. Wagner went on to appear in dozens of other shows with Universal, including the FBI, Night Gallery, Owen Marshall, Counselor at Law, and Sarge. From 1971 to 75, she appeared in five episodes of the Universal show Marcus Webb Welby, MD, and another two episodes of The Rockford Files. When she was cast as Jamie Summers in The Bionic Woman in 1975, that role was supposed to be the last that would honor her contract with Universal. Jamie came back from the dead. In that two-part backdoor pilot episode of The Six Million Dollar Man, where Jamie Summers is first introduced, Steve Austin, played by the late Lee Majors, travels to his old California hometown of Ojai to purchase a ranch up for sale, as well as visit his mom and stepdad. During this outing, Austin rekindles his relationship with his old flame, Jamie Summers, who happens to be one of the top tennis players in America. Unfortunately, while on a skydiving date, Jamie's chute fails to open, and she plummets helplessly to the hard, unforgiving ground. She falls through several tree branches, which presumably saved her from certain death, before smashing abruptly into the ground. She suffers numerous traumatic injuries to her head and extremities. Steve Austin then makes a heartfelt plea to his old boss, Oscar Goldman, to save poor Jamie's life by making her bionic like him. Goldman, with the help of Dr. Rudy Wells, proceeds to rebuild Jamie with a handful of cybernetic bionic implants. In the second part of the duo of episodes, Jamie begins to experience crippling headaches. Dr. Wells determines her bionic implants are being rejected by her body and that a sizable cerebral blood clot is causing her headaches and other malfunctions. In a dramatic scene, she collapses into Austin's arms and passes away on the operating table as her body shuts down. Fortunately, that's not the last we'd see of Summers, as her character was eventually brought back from the dead for a whole new series. Her character was so popular that ABC requested for the writers of The Six Million Dollar Man to devise a way to bring her back from the grave. In the first episode of the spin-off, it's revealed Summers was never really dead after all. Steve was only told she was dead. He discovers the truth about Jamie when he's hospitalized after severely injuring his bionic legs. Right before slipping into a coma, he catches a brief glimpse of Jamie. Later, he learns that one of Wells' assistants, Dr. Michael Marchetti, had urged Rudy to employ a newly developed cryogenic technique in order to keep Summers in a state of suspended animation until the cerebral clot could be safely removed. After the clot's taken care of, Jamie is revived successfully. The Bionic Woman was a surprise hit. The Six Million Dollar spin-off series The Bionic Woman made its debut on ABC in 1976 as a mid-season replacement. Historically, mid-season replacements haven't performed very well in the ratings, but after the 14-episode first season premiered, it became the fifth most watched show on television for the 1975-76 season. In fact, it ranked just behind established ratings juggernauts like Maude, Rich Man, Poor Man, All in the Family, and Laverne and Shirley. Even more impressive, is the fact that the bionic woman outperformed the six million dollar man that season. Jamie's implants were less expensive than Steve Austin's. Adjusted for inflation, the $6 million price tag behind Steve Austin's implants would be equivalent to more than $36 million today. While that might sound like a large sum of money, it should be noted that military tech always runs at a premium. The actual cost of rebuilding Jamie's body in The Bionic Woman is never revealed, but there's a line of dialogue in the series that points out the cost to replace her parts was significantly less expensive than the hardware needed to turn Steve Austin into the bionic anomaly he became, since her parts were, quote, smaller. 
That being said, when the show premiered in Germany, it was billed as the Sieben Million Dollar Frau, which translates somewhat ironically to the Seven Million Dollar Woman. Jamie Summers' abilities were throttled for believability. To maintain the show's suspension of disbelief, Kenneth Johnson, the series' creator and executive producer, laid out a very specific set of limits on Jamie's abilities. In one interview, Johnson mentioned that when dealing with the realm of fantasy, if you just say characters can do whatever they want because they're bionic, things can quickly get out of hand. To avoid this fate, you have to establish a very tight set of rules to play by. For example, both Steve and Jamie can jump up two stories without breaking a sweat, but they're unable to do three. Likewise, they can jump down three stories, but can't do four. Similarly, Jamie has the ability to flip over a car, but she can't topple a truck. These necessary limitations were occasionally implemented into episodes of the Bionic Woman. For instance, in the episode Kill Oscar, Jamie fights the Fembots and has to land a jump that's too far down for her bionic legs to handle. As a result, after making the leap, her legs sustain severe damage and she's nearly killed in the process. The Bionic Woman was cancelled, then renewed. While the series performed well for ABC throughout its first two seasons, the network ultimately made the decision not to renew for a third. At the time, they felt as if it no longer was attracting the specific demographic they hoped to lure in. Pouncing at the opportunity, NBC stepped in and picked up the series for a third and final season. That 22-episode season aired from September 1977 to May 1978 and featured a brand new character, Chris Williams, played by Christopher Stone, as a love interest for Jamie. This addition to the cast was partly due to the change of networks. Since they couldn't do a crossover with the $6 million man, they had to drop Steve Austin from the series cast. Although Steve was out of the picture, leaving Lee Majors high and dry, Richard Anderson and Martin E. Brooks reprised their respective roles of Oscar Goldman and Dr. Rudy Wells, thus becoming the first actors in TV history to play the same characters on two series that aired on two different networks. The End of an Era while The Bionic Woman and The Six Million Dollar Man ultimately ended up airing on two different networks, both shows were simultaneously canceled around the same time in the spring of 78. The Six Million Dollar Man ended rather unceremoniously with the standard episode, but to appease longtime fans, The Bionic Woman ended up featuring a more proper resolution. The last episode, entitled On the Run, sees Jamie coming to terms with the fact that she isn't quite human. After years of doing nothing but assignment after assignment with OSI, she resigned. The people in charge, however, decide Jamie can't simply be allowed to leave. Instead, they plan on placing her in a safe community where they can keep a watchful eye on her. She ends up going on the run, but eventually realizes she's still the same person she's always been and returns back to work with the OSI, albeit with fewer missions and a bit more free time. Years later, three spin-off made-for-TV Bionic Woman films were made between 1987 and 94, with Wagner and Majors reprising their respective roles. In the end, Jamie and Steve end up becoming the bionic couple after getting married. Now it's time to hear from you. Were you a fan of The Bionic Woman? And did you know it was canceled after its second season, only to be picked up by a rival network? Let us know in the comments section below.